Traveling can be rough on your body. Whether you're traveling alone on business or even with your family to a nice resort, it can be stressful, make you tired, and even sore. Today we're with Dr. Anthony Gross, Doctor of Chiropractic at Coyote Chiropractic. How are you today, Dr. Gross? Good, Kelly. How are you? Thanks for having me. So my understanding is is that traveling can be stressful on your body. And I mean, I can understand some of it, especially if you have an accident, but I don't understand why traveling can be stressful on your body. Please, please help me out here. It can, Kelly. What I tell patients and other people is you should treat travel like a sport. There should be a warm-up period, game time, and a cool-down period afterwards. Are you serious? Yes, I am serious. So I got a warm-up before I go on vacation. Now that just sounds backwards <laughs> to me. I mean, the whole thing, you're going on vacation. Well, with travel, you're going to be seated or immobile for long periods of time. So mm -hmm. it is it is a good idea to get some exercise, get your blood flowing, your heart pumping before you okay. wind up sitting for a long period of time. Sure. Otherwise, you can wind up getting more stiff and uncomfortable over long periods of time. Okay, so I'm tra traveling in an airplane. My family's here. We're all relaxed. How is that stressful? I'm sitting on a plane. It's supposed to be, you know, kick back, relaxing. Again, what's... Have you ever heard the old term, motion is life? Yes, I have actually. Well, yes. it's the opposite. Immobility causes breakdown of tissue and also pooling of blood into the extremities. So whether you're in a car or a plane for a long period of time, the blood can get stagnant and pool into the legs and the calves. And there's a condition called a deep vein thrombosis that some people may be at risk to, to develop during long periods of travel. I've actually heard that. I did not know that was a big issue. Well, it can be because of what it is is a blood clot that develops in the veins in your legs, which can lead to some really serious cardiovascular problems. From not moving? From immobility and not moving. Wow. Correct. So what's your suggestion? I mean, I'm on a plane. What, what do we go from there? Okay. What, one of the things is prepping for the game time or your okay. travel. So what we want to do is you want to hydrate. And I'm not talking about energy drinks and mm -hmm. coffee and things like that, but you want to drink fluids, water. Plenty of fluids to get yourself hydrated because you don't want to wind up dehydrated. The planes are pressurized at 10,000 feet when you're flying, so you actually lose body fluids a lot faster. So you don't want to get dehydrated and start getting cramps and run risks of things like deep vein no thrombosis. Idea. I had no so, idea. Yeah. Fluids, organic juices, juices and, and, and drinks that aren't rich in things like high fructose corn syrup, which are artificial sweeteners and, and not good at any time of the Don't want that. No. Yeah, I absolutely. Understand. What else? I mean, you, I got to exercise, but I'm on a plane, so I'm just sitting there. Yeah. Is there is there something that I mean? Is there something I should be sitting on, or well, or? Well, first of all, if you're lucky enough to get an aisle seat or be up be in first class, gives you a little more room. So if you can have an opportunity to stretch your legs out, bend and extend the knees, Good. roll your ankles or, or your calves and ankles in circles mm -hmm. in both directions to keep that blood flowing and pumping out of the legs back up towards the heart, that'd be really good for you. Another thing is to get up, take frequent breaks. Now, I know it's a little more difficult nowadays, yeah, a little bit, yeah. but if you could take a break every 30 to 40 minutes and walk up and down the aisle one or two times, go back towards the restroom, do a deep knee bend, just stretch out, stretch your back and stretch your legs. It's, it really uh, helps you run less of risk of an injury well, that would be or good. pain. What about lumbar support? Yeah, another thing is, is orthopedic support, so, um, mm -hmm. simple things. These planes, even in first class, these planes sometimes could be 20, 30 years old, so the cushion in these seats really break down over time. So what we like to do is recommend that patients bring a blanket or a pillow or borrow some pillows from the airline and put them on the cushion under your, under your bottom to help absorb some of, that, some of that pressure that builds up in there. Also, roll up a towel or a sweater or a jacket and put it under your low back to create a support under your lumbar spine or your low back to help support that natural curvature in your back. They also sell in stores in the airlines these pillows that are inflatable. They're cervical support pillows, kind of uh, oh, yeah, uh, horseshoe shape, <laughs> where you can put those behind your head and neck to help support the neck as well, the curvature that's naturally there. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. I just, I just had no idea. You're on a plane. You figured everything's perfect. Just relax. Enjoy the flight. But this is a serious situation these days. Interesting. So, but... I can't afford to fly into planes all the time. I'm traveling in my car. Okay, I admit it. I've done a 24-hour drive many times, nonstop. Not smart, I'm, I understand. But what can you do in a car? I mean, well, you can't be wearing these things, driving around with the little thing <laughs> on your neck. Come on. Well, luckily nowadays, the newer cars actually have the lumbar low back supports built into the seat. So there's sometimes is a dial on the side of the seat or an air bladder, an electric air bladder that you can inflate and increase mm -hmm. the amount of uh, curvature in that low back support. Or you can buy lumbar supports that you just strap around the back of the, the 
the car seat as well. Okay. The headrests are designed to help support your head and neck as well, so you want to have that even with the top of your head, and it also prevents further injuries like neck injuries or whiplash if you got rear-ended or hit as well. So it's important to, mm -hmm. to consider those things when you're traveling. Um, stretches and exercises, it's, you, you know, you have to stop the car and get out. So well, if you could take a break every hour, get out, do some knee bends, walk around a little bit, that would be really good. As well, when you're driving, you could do shoulder shrugs just to keep the, the blood flow in the shoulders, upper back, and do some side bends in the neck, some rotations, always keeping your eyes on the road, of, of course, um, and do some side bending, rotations, extension, and flexion of the neck. You also want to focus, change your focus while you're driving for long periods of time. If you're staring at one object or, or one focal point for a long period of time, it puts undue strain on the eyes and can cause neck tension and headaches as well. So all the stuff, the, the lumbar support thing behind your neck and, and under your, your bottom, that's just, that's just to relieve stress. Is that, and is there any well, other to reason? Support, support your natural posture. And what would that be? What, what's the shape? I mean, I keep hearing, uh, is it like an S shape or something? Or it's, I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's two curves in the neck. Mm -hmm. There's a curve in the neck and the low back that go in the same direction. So if you look at the side, you can see the, the curve shaped right. like a C. And then the same thing in the low back, it's shaped like okay. a C down here. And then the mid back, the thoracic spine has a reverse curvature there. So one's called a kyphosis, the other one's called a lordosis. Terms oh, we don't need yeah, to be concerned yeah, yeah, yeah. about, just make sure you have make a good sure neck right. and a low back support <laughs> under you when, you, when you're well, traveling. That's great. Well, okay, what about children? Your children are all, not like we were when we were younger. They didn't have the same rules. We were yeah. all over the car. Nowadays, you've got car seats for the young ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, Important to distinguish it with children, there's two types of seats. Mm -hmm. There's toddler seats and then there's infant seats. Okay. So in the first year of life, the infant seat actually sits, it's in the back seat of the car. Actually, all child seats should be in the back and never in the front because you run the risk of major injuries in the event of a car accident with the airbags deploying. So you always have the children in the back seat of the car facing backwards, okay? Good. General rule, a uh, child should be in a child seat if they're up to, or below age four and up to 40 pounds. Below age four, up to 40 pounds. Correct. Okay. So you should check with your state laws. I think they do vary state to state, but that is a general rule to follow. Good. Other things on a trip, very important, is eating healthy. Yes, right. And a lot of people, a lot of people forget about this. Just because you're on vacation doesn't mean it's a green light to go ahead and eat whatever you want. Yeah, it's a bad habit. Yeah, and it's a convenience <laughs> issue as sure well. Is. So take an extra 15, 20 minutes. Either go in your own fridge or run down to the store and buy some healthy options. Instead of eating, you know, chicken nuggets and, and fried foods or cheeseburgers, bacon double cheeseburgers, there are healthier options mm -hmm. and they're really easy to prepare nowadays and get your hands on. You know, little carrot sticks, celery sticks, instead of a cheeseburger. How about a whole wheat sandwich with turkey and low fat, low sodium cheese? I'm game. I like it. Pretty simple. And you're cutting down significant amount of fat and sodium intake during Great. that time as well. And even if you do need to stop for fast food, sometimes we're, we're stuck with no options. They are recently, or recently they've been taking more healthier option attitudes. There's apple slices in, in place of french fries. You can get low fat milk. Sometimes they have organic options as well if you can, if you can right. get and your yogurt. hands on that. They've all, not all of them, but some of them have yeah, come a long way Absolutely. With that. That's good. And as you were saying before, maybe it's a better idea to stop at a restaurant, get out and walk and exercise. That's a good idea. Get the blood flowing. Get the blood exactly. flowing. I like exactly. that. Um, what what other ideas? I mean, you're you're a sports physician, but it seems like this is something you're working on, or just this is just chiropractic care in general, staying this, healthy. Well, this is this is just lifestyle in general. This doesn't apply to chiropractic. What we're talking about. Another thing we should have talked about a few minutes ago was carrying objects when you when on you travel. Plane. Yeah, on a plane. Very you got good. luggage to bring. So I don't worry about it. I just lift whatever and put it up. What do I care about? Well, one of the general rules nowadays is, is you don't want to carry a, a carry-on in a plane. You don't want to bring more than 10% of your uh -huh. own body weight in a bag. Wow, I never thought of that. You know, uh, us guys try to stuff as much as we can into these small overhead compartment bags, and they could weigh up to 30 pounds at that point and run the risk of injury. There are small, tight compartment spaces in the airplanes, and the last thing you want to do is be bending, lifting, and twisting at the same time. That's the, one of the worst things you could do to your back. True. So watch what you carry. Make sure you're seated properly, got the right support. Exercise when you can, even just a little bit of movement. Get up and walk around. Uh, hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eat healthy. These are all good things. The other thing is a lot of times when patients come in with an injury, I may be starting their treatment, and then True. after a week they say, hey, I'm going out on vacation or I have a business trip to go on. Never thought of that. So one of the things we need to do is make sure there's continuity of care so they don't go two weeks without chiropractic mm -hmm. care if they're, 
going through some treatment now. So what we'll do is we'll recommend, you know, first ask your chiropractor if they have someone in the town or city or state that they're traveling to, to refer to so they can treat while away. Or another option is to go to a website, www.acatoday.org, and that's the American Chiropractic Association's website, and they have a full list of doctors in every state in the U.S. I'm glad you said that. I was going to ask you about a website. That's www.acatoday.org. You got it. There we go. Again, a lot of information. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. I no appreciate problem. it. Pleasure it's to be here. Great. It's just great. A lot of information, and we're going to stay healthy and put us on the right path. And it's been great having him here. Thank you again, doctor.